We'll get to join in with our uh, online viewers soon. If not, they'll get the recording later. Of all times, this would have been a good one for everyone to see. So uh, hopefully they'll be able to watch later. We're having our technical difficulties right now. But uh, the altar flowers are from Carol Wolf in memory of Jamie Colleen Wolf um, this morning. We're collecting for our SEM food pantry, and we got a ways to go, so keep, keep bringing in. We're, we only have one Sunday left, so bring some more items in, in if you can. Trustees meet uh, tomorrow night at 7. They've been doing a great job keep, keeping the building updated, and uh, we always have more things to do, so if you can show up tomorrow night. We've got a chair exercise going. We enjoy that each Monday and Wednesdays uh, at 1130. Uh, Al-Anon, Dave is scheduled for Al-Anon that Tuesday night. Online Bible study Tuesday night. Kids Club Wednesday afternoon. Tonight, dinner church. And come if you can at 5.30. Uh, meatloaf will be served and some faith will be served and friendship will be served. So come tonight if, if you can. Uh, next Sunday, you're going to have a treat uh, just for a break. I, I, as a, right now, I'm planning to be here, but uh, I get so many Sundays off, which I don't take, but I'm going to take a break and let Rock and Ron preach next Sunday. So come and, and hear uh, Ron preach, and, uh, and Mark's going to have some pumpkin treats for us uh, after service next Sunday. So looking forward to that. Uh, you know the rummage sale is coming up, hopefully you know. If we haven't asked you uh, yet, you are formally asked right now to help participate in any way you can by your prayers, your donations, uh, working the rummage sale. And uh, Sunday, I believe it's the 2nd of October, right after church, uh, come in your jeans and be ready to, if you can, stay after, sort out some uh, rummage sale items, get them out of the boxes, on the tables, and uh, we'll have some pizza after that, too. So, also, Holy Ghost Wiener Roast coming up. If you need a reminder, uh, put this on your refrigerator. These are out uh, in the, on the table where the programs are. Get one of these. says all your October uh, gatherings. And, uh, or pass that on to a neighbor so that we can uh, invite our whole community to be a part of our church here this morning. So, uh, Dave, you want to come on up and invite the Holy Spirit? One more thing. Well, we can still pray. We better pray while we... Uh, I'm <laughs> prayer is needed during these times. <laughs> if they come in right in the middle of the prayer, they'll, they'll know that we're, uh, the Lord was, was working right there. So, It's more prayer than usual today, right? Okay, let's uh, get our hearts be, you know, right before the Lord, and let's uh, ask God to enter our hearts, our minds, our souls, help us to be fully prepared, and whenever, hopefully, we can get the live stream going, we can you know, invite God to enter every home, every heart who watches this live stream uh, later on. So let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for each and every day that you give us the opportunity to serve you. We ask that you would fill this place, fill each of us, help us to truly draw close to you as you have drawn close to us. Help us to understand and to follow your word. Help us to praise you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Okay, let's stand and sing our opening hymn, Come Thou Almighty King. Change. 
heart, now rule in every heart, and ne'er from us to part, Spirit of power. To the great one in three, eternal praises be, and evermore, thy sovereign majesty, may we and to eternity love and adore. Amen. Please be seated. Okay. Let's pray this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We are here to worship you. Thank you for our free salvation bought with the blood of Jesus. May we be your true disciples, honoring you. Amen. I'd like to just spend a moment, and uh, where's Madison? Come on up. If you have been a member here, zero to 10 years, come on up. Or you've been coming, Lily and Carter and Sarah and... Come on up here. We want to get your... If you've been here less than 10 years, less than 10 years, <laughs> she's taking pictures. Madison's the photographer. The potential members can come up too, the ones that are going to come today, even though you're going to get your picture later. But Okay. Go ahead, and Carol and Matt and Josh. You'll get your picture later, too. But these, this is 10 years or less. Come on up, Carol. You're going to be here in, in a member in just a few minutes. But come on up. <laughs> 10 years or less, you've been coming or you've been a member or you're going to be a member. You might be so young you can't be. So this is a, a nice group we have here. Good answers to prayer. Yeah, I've been here only eight, eight years. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, how about 10 to 20? Is that too loud? Ten to twenty. You've been here coming for ten to twenty years. All right. Why don't you take her picture then? Not even if you're a member, you've just been coming. Yeah, okay. Okay, thankful for this group. Thankful for this group. Amen. Thank you. Yay. Well, that's a long time. Okay, everybody up here 20 years or more. Come on up. And we want to we want to hear what year you think you remember uh, starting and coming. Or maybe I'll just that probably won't stretch. Oh boy, here's a. Come in, squ squish. Somebody could come up here. Come on up. Oh yeah, come and scoot in so Madison can get your peer, your pictures taken. So you've been here for 20 years or more, and an, don't leave after this because I want to ask you how many years you've been here. Okay, well, Mike, get, come closer, come closer. Come up here, okay. Here's a good one. 20 years or more, hallelujah. This kept the church going. <laughs> Don't leave. Yeah, people, yell out what year you remember starting. 1957. 1957. 1941. 
56 years. 54 years. 66 years of the pals. 65 years. What was over here? 60, 66. About 40. 22. Whoa, 20, 21, 70 years, and then Jim and Jackie at home, when they watch it, she, she's going to beat, beat us all. Because <laughs> she came when she said she was four, and she 92 now. So uh, anyhow, praise the Lord for the, God's faithfulness working through all of you. Let's give these folks a, a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Donna, how many? Donna is 40, 43 years here. Good. Wonderful. That is a lot of long time faithfulness and uh, love for each other and love for God and supporting this church. And we are thankful for that. So, you know, afterwards is a reception um, for honoring all our members and, and also the uh, few that are coming in this morning as well. So we're, we're looking forward to that. Okay, Julie, come on up and give us part of this this morning's scripture. This morning's scripture reading comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 through 39. Remember those early days after you received the light, when you endured in a great conflict full of suffering? Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times, you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the compensation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And, but by righteousness, one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Let's stand together. We, we remember that we have received amazing grace. Uh, it's not by any works of righteousness that we've done, but according to God's mercy, he saved us. So we, we can never stop uh, singing about how God has been so merciful and kind to us. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now am found was blind but now I see just waste time my heart Savior is grant of me and like God. 
Thank you. Come on up, kids. Oops. Yeah. Okay, good. How many of you guys can, can any of you guys make a paper airplane that flies? You think you can? We're going to try this one in a minute. I didn't make it, so it might have a chance of flying because Dave made it. <laughs> but, but anyhow, when you fly a real airplane, who flies it? Who's in charge? The pilot. The pilot. Okay. So in our life, we say, somebody's got to be in charge. Who do you think we should let be in charge of our life? Who do you think, Ben? God, right. And uh, God should be in charge, and then we can be right next to him, co-pilot, trying to work together with God. So let's always remember that, that we're not the pilot. God is. Olivia's ready to come right up with us. So. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, who, can you try to try it? Try it. Let's see. Be ready to catch. See how far it can go back. Can you get it to Randy? You think you're going to get it? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you, you made it. All right. Well, we're, it needs a little further than that. You guys can take it to Sunday school. That'll distract you. Right. <laughs> so, okay. Let's pray first, okay? Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, help me to follow you and put you first. Amen. Okay. You want to sing for us? Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Here, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your good singing. We always need help. Madison. Madison. Thank you. 
Okay. Okay, we'd like to have Josh and Carol and Matt come on up front. If you want to face the congregation. And you know how you always uh, pray that prayer? The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Well, the Lord sent us these three, and they have jumped right in already, doing so much for the church. Uh, Josh, even before he was married to Michaela, came to all the teen gatherings. He was our male chaperone and, and was helpful uh, that way. Uh, Carol, from the time she's been here, has jumped in every meal, every outreach project. Uh, Matt is a trustee now, uh, part of our security. That makes you feel better, doesn't it? <laughs> and also a uh, heavy lifter every time we need <laughs> call him up and we need some things to help with. So we, we just appreciate these three already. But I present Josh Dimmitt, Matt Paul, and Carol Wolf to proclaim their faith in Jesus Christ and for membership in this congregation of our church. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, I do. Amen. Uh, this is for all the membership together. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in this world? So congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Josh, Matt, and Carol now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Josh, Matt, and Carol with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. And now let's join all together as a church professing our faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. To each of these three, they've already been baptized. I say remember your baptism and be thankful that Christ forgives our sins, our sins are washed away. I'm going to go one by one here. Josh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may you remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ all of your life. Amen. Amen. Let's say amen. Will we say amen? amen. <laughs> Carol, may you remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ all your life and serve him with your whole heart. Amen. Amen. Good. Yeah, bend down. <laughs> Matt, may the Lord continue to work mightily through you as you study the scriptures, make you a strong disciple 
a leader of men and leading them to Christ. We pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Stay here just a minute longer, so let's go on. We're going to remember all together. As a member of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Let's say it all together. I will. And as a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. Members of the household of God, I, I commend Josh, Matt, and Carol to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant, faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who's called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you, strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you might live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's congratulate our members. Thank you. Amen. And we'll ask our ushers to come forward for the morning offering. Let's rise. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for your unfailing love and faithfulness. You are our hope, and we put our faith in you. May your name be praised forever. Please bless our church to do your will. Please be seated.
We've got some praises and prayer requests we'll put before the Lord all week long. A praise that Betty Sims is home now, so keep working on her health, but glad she's able to be home. Uh, Wilma and Randy Newcomb, uh, that's Scott's sister, has uh, upper respiratory infection, and we're just getting to know Wilma as she came uh, a couple times here recently to help with meals and things. Uh, Dave's daughter, Megan's having some health issues and possible surgery, so prayers for Megan. Uh, Deacon McCain, is that right, has COVID. Okay, Deacon McCain has COVID, prayers for that. Prayers of thanks for family from Dennis Betts. Uh, Allison Keller was in a car accident and has a concussion. That's Julie's niece. We're uh, praises for Josh, Matt, and Carol as they build their relationship with God. We're, pray we're thankful for that. Thankful for this beautiful day and all the friends since attending here, Carol said. She's become a friend to all and, friend and friends to her. Alicia Back is having a double mastectomy tomorrow. That's uh, Susan's niece, so prayers for her. I wrote this down. Quindolin, is that the right way to say it? Is getting married this weekend. Uh, and this, what is it? Kendolin. Oh my goodness, I still couldn't get it right. Okay, Kendolin is, is getting married this weekend, a relative of Julie's. And uh, we have some birthdays, and uh, one, uh, one is my neighbor who watches online, he wanted his son Ian remembered for his birthday today. And also, George, is, birthday is what, tomorrow? Let's sing happy birthday to George. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear George. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. So, Lord, we're thankful for each one. Uh, you created us. You called us to be your disciples, and you called us to a group of disciples to work for your kingdom. You've called us here at Mount Washington. And we thank you for the light that you've given our lives and the light you are to us. And we pray that we won't keep that to ourselves, but we'll share that great news of your light and your unfailing love and your hope. We'll pray that we'll share that with our whole neighborhood and help that to just spread and spread, Lord. Lord, we pray for Betty Sims, uh, her health. We're glad she's home. Prayers for Wilma and Randy's health for Megan's health, for Deacon McCain. Prayers of thanks for family, and as Dennis Betts remembers, the uh, joy of family. Prayers for Allison Keller and to overcome her concussion. Prayers of thanks for Josh, Matt, and Carol and their relationship with you, Lord, and you're calling them here to this church. Lord, we thank you for friends in the church and how we can love each other. And we ask your special care for Alicia tomorrow and with the surgeon and all who are part of her care, Lord. Lord, we thank you for happy occasions. Uh, Kendallin getting married this weekend. Lord, bless their marriage to be centered on you and to be a one of love and peace. Lord, we thank you for uh, celebrating birthdays. We thank you for George being here with us, Lord. Uh, for our neighbor Ian and just knowing that you love us you created us you have a purpose for us in your kingdom and so we are thankful in your holy name amen let's pray with our eyes open let's pray our Lord's Prayer together our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I asked Dennis to sing this one. Are you singing it or playing it? Both. Good. <laughs> Tell them what it is. <laughs> Great is thy faithfulness. Great is 
Our second scripture reading comes from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 8. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed by God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended for righteous, when God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one, of, of, as one who pleased God, and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his, by his faith, he commended the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would rather later received as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. This is the word of God. It it shall be trusted. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. This is the least amount of time I've ever given myself for a sermon, so we'll see if we can get the condensed version here. (laughs) faith in Jesus will take you through 
I admire those mature adults, and, and uh, not like when I was a teen, mature was like if you were 30. Oh, you know, I'm talking about mature adults who have lived through so many changes and the ups and downs and the joys and sorrows of life, but have kept their faith in Christ and have a positive view of this world. Uh, God would never call us to be old, cranky individuals, but ones that trust God, that have seen Jesus' faithfulness through all times. So I commend this, hold fast, to hold fast to the profession of our faith, to embrace all the truths and ways of the gospel, to get fast hold of them, and to keep hold against all temptation and opposition, because he is faithful, that is promise. God has made great and precious promises to believers, and he is a faithful God, true to his word. Let's think of some of his promises. He said he will always be with us, even to the end of the age, Jesus told his disciples. We, he said he would never leave us or forsake us. Jesus told us if we had faith the size of a mustard seed, little pinpoint, that, that we would be able to move mountains. Jesus told us, ask and we shall receive. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. These are promises of God. We've been told that all who put their faith in Christ will not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus promised that he goes and prepares a place for us and will come again and take us to himself when it's our time. We're promised that if we confess our sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And not only to forgive us, but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. These are only just a few of the promises that our God gives us. And he's faithful. And we need to hold on to those promises all through every week, every day, and every year. This is no news to anybody, but following Christ will come with suffering, but the Holy Spirit will see us through. There's normal sufferings of life. We live in a broken world. Our health is not perfect. We're not living in the Garden of Eden, and we're not to heaven yet. So we have all these problems in between. We also may have problems as Julie read in the first set of scriptures that in some places as you profess your faith, they can even confiscate your property, seize your property, throw you in jail, be uh, insulted and persecuted and even put to death as the early Christians were. Now, if we had to say this is your sign up to become a member <laughs> of the church, but amazingly, the church was built on the blood of the martyrs. People knew this was what was possible to happen, but they said, faith in Christ is so real. God is so true. How could I not give everything I have? And that is what we're called to do, whether it's we're going to get persecuted that way or whether we just have to make the decision, who's the pilot of my life today and every day? Is the goal of my life that I am the most comfortable doing exactly what I want to do, or is it my goal that I will follow Christ? He's the commander. He's the master. And by doing that, the Holy Spirit will see us through. You know, Jesus will enable us, enable us to see us through. God works through faith, uh, faith of his people. It says, the just shall live by faith. Anyone who's declared righteous before God will never be because they have a list of good deeds they've done, but only because their faith in Jesus Christ. And we do good after we have faith because we want to be like Jesus, you know? Uh, we imitate who we adore. That's it. So we do this, but we live by faith. We know that this world isn't all that it's supposed to be yet, but the light, it says, the light that's come into our life has changed us, changed our priorities, changed who we will love. As we taught the kids club, we will love everybody. We will love our enemies. We will pray for them. That's something that God's got to work on us all our lives. But God works through his people. There was a saying I haven't said for a while and just came to mind as I was studying for the sermon. I said, remember when I used to say it quite often? I don't know how, but you remember who, what the rest of us? But I know who. Can you say it with me again? I don't know how, but I know who. 
There's so many situations in life. We don't know how it's going to work out, but we know who's going to see us through, who promised he would always be with us, who promised us his resurrection power, who promised that he will help us persevere. Amen. God rewards earnest faith. I love this. And without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Remember, it's, it's not wimpily seek him. Who not put him the last priority. If I've done everything I wanted to do this week, watched every TV program, done, and now I might give God some time. Or if I've spent every bit of money on entertaining myself and taking care of it, but now I'll, I'll think about God. No, who earnestly seek him, who put him first. God will play second fiddle to no one. God is the, the one and only. And he says he's a jealous God. And so he, he will not play second to anything. Who earnestly seek him. What do we get for that reward? I just think of this. We get the reward of God himself. God himself to live with us. Get God's unfailing love. All other kinds of love can fail sometimes. God's unfailing love. God's provision. We get, it says if we, if we will let the Holy Spirit work with us, we can get righteousness in our life, joy, and peace. It, it, that means despite even circumstances. We have to let the Holy Spirit help us. Christ has power to heal and help. Um, just little things. You know, when Jesus said, you'll do greater works than I've done, we thought, you're, you're kidding, greater works than Jesus? Well, a, a, a week or two ago, uh, you know, I had uh, my daughter at a Riverside United Methodist Hospital. Susanna Wesley Way was what the drive we drove on, healing thousands of people. You know, Jesus healed people one by one. But here is what the Methodists do. Here is what Christians do. We use whatever power we have, including our finances, our smarts, you know, our mind, and we use it for healing and for good. And this is how God continues his kingdom uh, on earth. Think about the courage for living. Uh, just, I always remind you, read more of your Bible than you do just the news, because if you read just the news, you think, you know, the whole world's falling apart, because they pick the worst things that's happening anywhere, you know, and there's so much good happening that's never said, but, but this was Paul's, um, this was Paul's advice to his mentor, Timothy, and so in 2 Timothy, the little book, Paul's giving his mentor, this young man, and Paul was so bold, he was giving this young man who must have been pretty timid, uh, some advice. He said, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So I've, I've memorized that years ago because whenever I get fearful, whatever, I remind myself, no, that fearfulness, that's not from God. God has given us, you know, has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So uh, God has promised his courage, his kindness, a home in heaven. He tells us even in the presence, if we had enemies, even in the presence of my enemies, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, it says in Psalm 23. My cup overflows. Even if I'm walking through the darkest valley, you're there with me. God has so many promises because he loves us more than we can ever imagine. And our faith is just a small piece of what God deserves back from us for all that he does and continues to do for us. Whoops, I didn't have my, I forgot, I didn't write my conclusion on the slide even though my husband told me to. So uh, this, is, <laughs> this is the conclusion. There's so many things changing in the world, but Jesus Christ promised he's the same yesterday today and always. That's a scripture. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and always. If we can keep strong, earnest faith in Jesus, he'll take us through any trial. He'll be with us in every joy, and he will secure us a place with him for eternity. Let's pray. Holy God, help us to have very strong faith 
you have promised to reward us, and it is a reward of being able to walk with you each day. It's a reward to, to know that our faith is the victory over this world, that no matter what life brings, good, bad, or ugly, you are there with us, empowering us. And Lord, we're thankful that those little seeds of faith that we plant, you will bring them to fruition and bring good and great things to pass. May our church, may our lives give glory and honor to you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing about that time when we get to be in heaven. Revelation song. We get to sing how we're going to praise God. Amen. Worthy is the man who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the man who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Lift up your voice. 
We do get to rejoice and we get to be so thankful for faith in the living God. Let's celebrate together. Let's go to the fellowship hall and enjoy each other's company and get one of these crosses too. <laughs> 